just before this video starts, I just wanted to ask if I could have a little bit of support from you guys. I noticed a little bit of influx in my channel views and stuff, and I really appreciate that. I also appreciate all of you that have been sticking around and watching videos. But if you find this video enjoyable in any way, I would just ask you to share it around, like, subscribe, all the normal YouTube stuff. I would just appreciate that because right now I am... I set a personal goal for myself to try and hit 400 or 450 subscribers by the end of the year. It's just a little challenge I'm trying to do. I just want to see a little bit more growth and engagement on my channel here. So I don't feel like I'm just throwing my voice into the void and I'm just uploading videos onto YouTube for nothing. In the end of the day, it's all because I want to and because these are videos I wish to make. But either way, I can't get more support well, I can't get any more followers on my own, so I'm just beckoning for some support, and I'll just let you get onto the video. I just wanted to say this before it. Hey there, welcome. Uh, this is my first speed paint video. Right now I'm just doing a live commentary, like right now I'm watching everything that's going on in my video editor. What I'll explain a little bit what's going on here. Um, I made a Halloween profile picture and right, and I decided for the Christmas one that I wanted to just, um, I just wanted to take that, that drawing and just reshape it, remake it. Because, I mean, half of it was already done. All I had to do is erase some stuff, like the stock there. I just had to erase it and, uh, do some recoloring and some repainting. Um... And yeah, sorry if my commentary isn't the best on this first video. Might be saying um and, and all that stuff. Might be blanking out a little bit. But really, my process was I was trying to make this easier. Uh, as you can see in the left side, I do have two layers. Layer 1 and layer 2. Um, sometimes with the Psy. Psy is the art program I use for making these. And sometimes Psy, it has a bad habit of just not working at all like as it's supposed to so you can make two layers you could do the black layer in the front right you can do your drawing and all your layering and on one layer and then the layer two when you're supposed to color it just for some reason does not seem to at all like at all just not work how it's supposed to even if you like delete the file make a new one and that might be because it's an older program, but I can't complain too much. It is a free program. So I don't know if anyone's watching this and they are looking to do something like this themselves. But if you are, um, Psy is a good program to use. And uh, I, could, I could link you to that in the description. And yeah, I probably had a long pause there. You probably noticed the long pause while I was talking. That's probably because I was... This is from a live stream I did. I did all of this live. I was just listening to, like, some Christmas jazz. And I just decided to do this one night because I wanted to change my profile pic for the season. And I said, screw it. Plus, it was something new to do. This was when I was starting to get back in the drawing and, uh... You know, um, just trying to do new things. And I was actually proud of this skull I made. I was pretty proud of it. The uh, red eyes, as you can see there, the red eyes were not always there. I was going to have that in the original uh, Halloween profile picture. Um, I was going to have that, but I decided to make it more like a jack-o'-lantern. And I said, screw it. Which is why it had the yellow eyes, the green stock and everything. I just wanted to make it look like a pumpkin skull with lit up eyeballs. But the eyes that you see there are the originals. And um, to get back on the other point, um, I do these on live streams. So if you're ever interested, just keep an eye out. Uh, um, stay subscribed to my channel, have notifications on, and uh, be sure to check your, um, your YouTube notifications tab. Because I didn't know this for a long time, but even with creators I watch, Sometimes I wonder where the hell they are and where they've been with uh, making content. And apparently they've been there the whole time. It's just that YouTube doesn't really advertise or tell you to check the notifications tab or the subscriptions tab. 
They don't tell you to check it at all. But that's where you find all that stuff. So in case that you have, in case you have the same similar problem, just be sure to check that. Um, it helps out a lot. And in my case, if you're interested in seeing these live, then you could catch this live next time. Uh, won't promise you I'm working on a skull. I uh, I tend to do a lot of uh, for my style of art. I consider myself to do uh, a lot of cartoon art, uh, graffiti art. Uh, and abstract art. I really like those forms a lot. Um, I have done realism in the past, um, but I'm not the best at realism. And one of the things I need to work on for when it comes to art is shading. That's something I do need to work on. Is like adding, like I can add details. Like I, I'm pretty good at adding details. It's just that I need to figure out shading so I could add more, even more detail with color to really make things stand out more. But in my mind, I kind of like things like this, what I drew, where it's simple, but yet it has the detail, but it still looks pretty simple at the same time. But it's not too simple to where it looks lazy and just, you know, bland. Uh, and, and yeah, um, and this took forever, by the way. And like I said, I'm going to do a lot of stumbling because I'm doing a live reaction to this. So forgive me if you're one of those people that find it annoying when people stumble on words and can't find them. I'll probably get better with this in time. I plan to make more videos like this. So hopefully I can just learn to hone it better and actually have more concise points to talk about. But I thought I'd just freeball it here, you know, just wing it. And yeah, um, back on the, on the other point I was making... I just tend to, I tend to like art that's, that has, it's simple, but it has detail. So it's not just, uh, not, so it's not lazy, if that makes any sense at all. I'm sure it does, but in my mind, it kinda, it doesn't. But either way though, that's kind of what I try to go for in a lot of my art is, I try to make it simple looking, but have detail. And in this video, you'll see a lot of coloring errors. And like I said, I figured this out better now in more recent projects um, with layering. Um, I just always do a test first. That if the layering doesn't work, then I just delete the project and make a new file, do it again. But I don't draw anything, I just make a simple shape and test it. So like I would do a black outline, and then on layer 2 I try coloring to make sure it's going to work. So I don't put in all this time and effort, and then I have to do what I'm doing here, where I have to do these, where I have to do all this editing. I have to make sure the pixels look nice, I have to make sure it's all colored right. And then something else that you might may or may not notice with my art is, I, I, some, I, for some reason, I just do. I like changing up how the crack in the skull looks. I always like changing it up, because for some reason I can't keep it consistent. I can keep everything else consistent, the details, the eyes, the uh, nose, e teeth, everything else. But the crack in the head I always make different. And so I think I'm going to keep doing that just to, just to do it. Because sometimes it's fun to draw it different. And I found it pretty pretty neat. I looked back on some of my other drawings of the, of the channel skull. I don't know what to call them. I don't have a name for the... For the like the profile pic, I don't have a name for them. I know some people name their like channel icons and stuff, you know, they have a name for them. But yeah, I don't have one for mine. I just wanted to, I like skulls and I just wanted to make one for my channel, which was the main inspiration. Um, right now, I'm just, uh, what you're seeing being sketched is I'm drawing the Santa hat on top. It took me a little bit. I, sometimes when it comes to details, I'm really picky, especially with line work like that, I'm really picky. And I can spend a lot of time erasing and fixing. I'm trying to get better with that, um, but if you draw, you tend to have a, you tend to be picky with how you form your lines and how you draw. You tend to be picky with that. And yeah, um... If you have a name, if you have a name idea for the channel skull, I'm I'm all ears for it. You can go ahead and let me know 
what you're thinking for the uh, skull's name. That's fine by me. I'm willing to take suggestions. But I don't really have one in mind. So there, I am testing out colors. Because my original plan was... I was going to put Christmas lights around it. I wanted to have... Uh, I thought it'd be a cool idea. But something that... I'll get... I'll talk about it more when we get there in the video. I'll talk more about it. But, uh... The, I, I was at first going to do like a outline like that, but I decided no, that looks too weird. So later on you'll see I actually make the green outline more closer to the black outline. Just to make it look better, because I tried this out and it, to me it doesn't look good. And then also if you see the green line in the 5, if you see that on the right, um, I did that to mark my pen size, so that way I remember what size the, uh, pen was I used for that line and that color. That way I don't screw it up. Because sometimes you have a hard time fig remembering which pen number you used. Sometimes it gets all mixed up. And the original idea was I wanted to make the Christmas lights come out of the skull crack. And that still kind of holds through, but not totally. Um, and then towards the end of the, towards the middle-ish, toward the end, I make a horrible color decision, and luckily I realized it. I think this was a two-parter stream. I'll let you know when, uh, part two starts. Because, yeah, I did not, <laughs> the coloring I did for the background, I, was bad. Like, I thought it was good at the time, but then I realized it, I'm like, oh, that's bad. Fuck that. And then, the original idea I had was for the coloring of the nose and the eyes. It would be cool to capture that, uh, I don't know, with Christmas lights. I kind of like how there's like the, uh, there's all the different colors of the lights, right? All blended together in the one and it looks really neat, looks pretty, everything looks really nice. But I didn't know how to capture that in the drawing. I didn't know how to do that. I didn't know how to capture it. So I said, screw it. Let's just make the eyes green and the nose green. Because it's holiday colors, you know, red and green. Those are probably the most typical holiday colors. Besides the colors I'm going to add later. Um, you could almost technically say every color is a holiday color due to also Christmas lights usually being multicolored. But, uh, but yeah... <clears throat> so yeah, I'm just doing more outline work there. And uh, uh, while that while that's going on, something else I was also gonna bring up was I in later speed hearts, um, in later videos, you're gonna see that I I end up doing a lot of stuff for Newgrounds. Um, for me, I like Newgrounds. I when I was younger. I still have my account from when I was younger. My account on there is cool Tyler XXX. I've had that account forever. And uh, only recently, like a couple years ago I'd say, I finally started posting art on there. And I wish I'd done it earlier. That's kind of a regret I have. I wish I'd done it earlier because I found a lot of projects I worked on for Newgrounds. It kind of helped me to start drawing more and get back into it, which is what helped me. Besides the um, skull drawings here, you'll see a few speed paints on those. Or at least this one for now. But that's something that really helped me get back in the drawing, was uh, being able to... just being able to um, have something fun to work on, and something that would be a serve as an essential function. You know, it's not... Because drawing for fun is good i like that drawing for fun is fun but it's nice when you have something planned it gives it more purpose it, uh, it lets you have more purpose and right there i'm just adding details in for like the fuzzy part of the santa hat just adding in details um but yeah it's nice when you can draw art and ha and, and you have a more of a feeling it serves a purpose if that makes any sense i'm sure if anyone is an artist and they watch this they'll get what i'm saying 
but uh, I'm just trying to describe it in case you are someone who has, doesn't draw a lot or is looking to get into it. Um, something I would recommend is, like, I would, if you're watching this and you are looking to get into art or trying it, I would recommend using Psy, um, the program I'm using here. Um, it's, it's fun, it's easy, it looks like a lot. Um, but based on what you're seeing on the screen, it looks like a lot. But a lot of these art programs function almost the same. Just some of them have different features or different buttons or different functions. Once you learn one, you almost know all of them. I'm just saying. Once you learn one, you almost know all of them. You just have to, with other programs, you just have to learn the small differences in how certain tools work or where they're placed or what functions do what. It just takes a little practice and learning. And uh, and with art, when you first start, it's always going to be it's going to be tough cuz you're going to you're going to think of something in your brain and then you're going to try to draw it and it's not going to come out right and you're going to be like, "Oh god, this looks horrible. What am I doing?" But what you have to do is you have to keep pushing through it, right? You have to keep trying. And that's hard to do. Because it's like you pick you picking up a new hobby and you see your friend, they're so good at it, they're good, they're cool with it, and you're like, I want to do that, and then you do it, and then you're like, fuck, I can't do it. But eventually you can, even if even if it's not the greatest, okay? Even if it's not the greatest, you're still doing it, and skill comes with time. Unfortunately, with things like art and stuff, skill comes with time. So... You'll eventually you'll find yourself getting better or something that I do personally and I think I paused to take a break here you might see it paused here I might have taken a break we might be at that part in my stream where I took a small break or something yeah now I'm back now it's going again um but yeah something you'll find with doing art is it just it takes time and I might be repeating myself here because I addressed the pause in the stream. So forgive me if I'm repeating on past points I just said. Because like I said, I'm I'm freestyling this commentary. I don't have a script. I, I don't like doing scripts all the time. For me, it kind of feels cheap. Because yes, it's still your words, but you're reading from paper. And sometimes when you read from paper, it doesn't... You, your voice sounds monotone. It doesn't feel genuine because you're reading from a paper. It's kind of like doing reports in school and shit, you know? You're like, oh yeah, this thing was this thing, and that thing was that thing. And you make sure to look around the room, because that's the skill you learn, is to make sure you're looking at your audience. But with this, I just wanted to wing it. But back to the other point with uh, art, with starting. Yeah, I was making the friend analogy. I was, uh, yeah, your friend might be really good at something, you want to do it, and you're like, oh fuck, I'm not as good as them. Eventually you will, even over time, you'll find improvement. Whether it's big or small, you'll find improvement. And I, uh, something I like to do, that's what I was going to explain. Something I like to do is, when it comes to art, is I like watching videos like these. This is part of the reason I'm making a speed paint video. is because I like watching these and getting the artist's input and in how they're doing things. And right now, just on a side tangent, I'm picking out the background color, one of the background colors I had in mind. I, I like that blue, and eventually I will use it, but not to the full extent I should have used it for. You'll see the awful color choice I make coming up. But um, but yeah, I like watching the uh, I like watching some of my favorite artists and creators. I like when they do videos like this where they just give commentary and they give some insight and input onto their thought process and what they were doing, because that can help me figure that can help me out with trying new things and saying, oh yeah, maybe I can try that next time. And then, yeah, to break from it again, I'm addressing the video, to break from my thought again. Um, what you saw there was I was using the paint bucket tool. That's the one, th that's kind of a curse on Sai. Don't rely on the paint bucket tool. I'm just warning you now, don't rely on the paint bucket tool. It does not fucking work, at least for me. I was told it can work. You have to use the magic wand tool, apparently. But I'm still figuring that out. So if I figure that out in a future update or a video, I will be sure to let you know on how to use the magic tool. 
um, be, uh, the magic tool wand tool. Because, holy shit, the paint bucket, I thought it was going to be like Microsoft Paint. It works in the lines that are empty. But it doesn't. It Sometimes it'll just erase everything, but luckily there's Control z Control c is basically undo. So yeah, thank god undo exists. But anyway, back to my one point I was making. The main point was is that I just like watching my favorite creators do this stuff, give their thought process, and then trying to implement their ideas into my stuff. And that helps me like come up with new ideas, use new techniques, see things from a different perspective. And that includes shading and details. I try to pick up on how they do that if they talk about it. Or maybe if there's a question, like let's say you have a question, and this can apply for this video too, um, if you want to leave me a question. You can do this with your creator as well, with a creator you like. You, you can just leave it in the comments and see if they'll address it in the next video, or if they will reply to it. Sometimes they'll be nice and they'll reply to it, or they'll save it for the next video. So I would I would be willing to do the same thing. If you have a question for me I don't address here in this video, you can ask me. I will reply to it. Um, I, I can't guarantee it'll be a quick reply, though. Can't, get, can't make promises because uh, outside of YouTube, I have, a wor I, have a, I have a job, I have work, I have a life, you know, like everyone else. So sometimes I'm not there to answer the comment section, but just know it will be seen. For any comment I get, I do my best to address it and see it. Even if it's leaving a little heart, you know, leaving the heart thing, like you love this person's comment and stuff. And, uh, yeah, just if you have any questions, you can ask me. Let me know. I'll do my best to get back to you on it. And I can address that for you. But, yeah, um, so for an example, in a lot of my art recently, I have, uh, I've taken a lot of inspiration from Friday Night Funkin's art style. I really like how Phantom Arcade draws stuff a lot. Like, I like his art a lot. It's great. And that's also why, that's part of my aspect of art too, is Newgrounds. I really like Newgrounds art. I just like how, like, I like how Tom Fulp and the Behemoth, I like how they draw stuff. Their lines and how they make characters. Again, to me, they have the same ideology. It's like they make such simple designs, but it has great detail, even though it's simple. And that's what I like about that. Like, I think that's why I love Newgrounds art so much, especially from the Behemoth and from Phantom Arcade, is because of the fact that it's simplistic. Like, you can look at the image and you're like, oh, okay, it's a, it's a short guy with a hat and a microphone and big-ass fucking shoes. But at the same time, the detail, though, like, I like how, if you look closer at the drawing, I like how the shading is on the hands, the knuckles are emphasized, so that it, it's emphasized that the main character, boyfriend, he has huge hands. Like, he's a short guy, he's a short man, but he has giant feet and huge hands. So, <laughs> to me, I just really like that. And I also like, um, like, if you look closer at the drawing, too, there's shading details, almost like what I'm doing with the hat here. There's, uh, there's shading details, like in Boyfriend's hair, you'll find that there's some darker areas to emphasize the highlights of his blue hair. And then, also, the way the microphone is drawn, I like how they add the little details and reflective marks in there. That's really nice. That's really fun. And, yeah, just... It's stuff like that that I like a lot. It's the simple idea of a simplistic drawing, but with a lot of but with details in it. That gives it more. It makes it look more important than what it is, and that's what I like. And I know I've probably said this. I've said this point in multiple ways. How many times? I'm just trying to implement what I like. At least some of some of the stuff I like. I'm trying to emphasize that. Um, and I'm sure you got the point by now, so sorry if that's annoying to you. I apologize. Don't mean for it to be annoying. But yeah, um, to emphasize some of the 
changes that were going on in the video. Um, so at one point I erased some lines for the uh, Christmas lights. Um, I erased some lines because it was overlapping, and I'm like, eh, screw that, I don't want a lot of overlapping in this profile picture. So I just erased some lines, and now I'm just uh, I'm going over some areas, filling them out. Trying to make some of the black lines look uh, look better, look more sharper, more crispy. And when I say crispy, I mean it in a good way, not a crusty way, where it looks bad. That's what I'm trying to do here. And, uh, yeah, so for an example, how I told you I was trying to work on shading and details, this is an example, even in small ways, and this goes for new artists as well. Even if you do small steps like this, where I, what I'm doing, where I added that darker red in the Santa hat, so it's not just like red on red, like even that counts. It's a small thing. It's not big. It's a small thing, but it counts. And that's what I've been trying to do in my, uh, that's what I've been trying to do in new projects is like, okay, what can I do to make this better? Like I'm still trying to challenge myself. What can I do to make it better? And so, for example, that's what I did here. I'm like, yeah, the red line looks good there in on the top. But I decided to do this. Um, make the red line extended more. So that it just, it looks better. And plus, it that way it's not clashing. Because the skull is the same color as the hat. So in order to add some more differenti differentiating detail, I decided to just add more of that darker red there that was my idea and if you ever watch these streams like live if you ever watch these streams live um something i don't do is i don't talk like this because when i draw i don't talk like that's something that's something i don't do because when i draw i concentrate a lot like i don't even blink sometimes and so after a while of drawing, my eyes will hurt really bad because I'm staring at a screen, I'm forgetting the blink, because I'm so into it, because I get so into it. And also I listen to music like I did on this stream. I listened to the, I mentioned it earlier, I listened to the Christmas jazz. I, did, I listened to that on this stream because I drew this in December. So I just, I like listening to music just going with the flow, drawing, and uh, it's really fun and relaxing. I like doing that a lot. Um, something I was going to bring up earlier was something that you could do. Like, let's say you're watching this and you're new to art or you're looking to get into it, right? Let's say that. Something you could do to get better at art is, I recommend this for everybody. And some people think I'm crazy, but uh, for me, something that helped me get in the drawing in the first place was this as well. It's drawing shapes. Out of all things, drawing shapes is one of the main things I suggest. And that seems so simplistic and basic. You know, you're like, oh, you mean I can't even try to draw an object or draw one of my favorite characters? I can't do that. You can, but shapes are easy. Everyone knows what shapes are. And this right here, I'm going to interrupt what I was saying. This right here is the worst color choice I made. I decided for the outline, I wanted to have it brown. Because I wanted to make it look warm. But then later on, you're going to see, I'm including this so you see the process. If I want it, if I could, I would delete this. But I wanted to have this in here so you could see the awful color choice I made. Because later on, I opened this project up, and I'm like, what the fuck was I thinking? Because on stream, I was talking a little bit. I had some engagement on the stream, but not a lot. Since I'm a, you know, I'm a low sub count YouTuber, I don't have much engagement on my streams. So I had some engagement going on, right? I had some engagement. But not what I was looking for, you know? Not what not what typical, you know, famous streamers get. So, I guess my brain kind of rotted after a while. And I, and I thought this color would be a good choice. It, it's bad. I hate it. Especially when I, uh... 
especially later on when you see the final result and how it turns out, you'll you'll also say, what the fuck was I thinking? You'll probably say the same thing. And sometimes with art, you make those bad choices and you gotta fix them. So it's, it's a learning process. Even when you know what you're doing, sometimes with projects, it's a fucking learning process. Sometimes you, you still screw it up. You still make bad choices and then you're like, okay, what was I doing? I can't do this. So then you gotta change it. But anyway, I'm going back to the, what I was saying. And that was, for me, when I first came to drawing art, getting into it, I like drawing shapes because, yes, people normally want to try and draw their favorite characters. They want to draw an object or something. But I'd say that comes a little later because, for one, shapes everyone knows shapes that's what i was on that's what i was saying before this awful color graced my presence is that everything everyone knows shapes okay like squares circles rectangles whatever right because in a lot of drawings for me i try to look at it as shapes right because when you look at a drawing like the christmas hat at the end that's a circle the eyes are like ovals. The um, the teeth are almost rectangular, just with a rounded, like circular edge. It's all it's all shapes, really. At the end of the day, that's what part of drawing is is shapes. So when you learn to draw shapes and experiment with them, it helps to give you more of a perspective. Something that also helps is negative perspective, which is looking in between the lines. Sometimes people have a hard time with saying, okay, I see the shapes, but I can't draw them. So, so you can see it. And sometimes looking at negative spaces of things, like let's say you're, let's say you're looking at a reference to draw something. If you look at the space in between that object or that thing, that that's negative space and sometimes people see that better like for me I can sometimes see negative space but I don't always work with negative space I know the principle and I know it's there sometimes it helps me but not a lot but I know a lot of other people who are like oh yeah yeah I see the negative space there okay now it makes sense and then they can draw it so it's just about learning what perspective you need to take and learning what you can do and that's why I say, that's why I try to make it easy. Like, people ask, sometimes ask me for advice. And I always tell them shapes. Because it's easy, recognizable. You learn about shapes when you're, you know, when you're in fucking preschool and kindergarten. So everyone knows what a square is, what a circle is, rectangle. So that when you draw it, people aren't like, oh, what the fuck is that? What's that thing? Because I know how that is. Um, when you draw something and then people don't know what it is. Because in your mind, you're like, oh, it's this thing. And then people, they look at your drawing or your art, and they're like, that's not, what I, that's not what I see. That's not what it is. And art is subjective. So people are always going to say that, even if you draw something very clearly. Sometimes they might see something else. But with shapes, it's a shape. So, yeah, I mean, really, it's just a shape. You know, you can't give someone too much flack. For drawing a shape and not to mention if someone is really if they get that kind of if they are being that that idiotic where they're like what the fuck is that it's a circle dude or it's a square like what do you mean what is it it's a shape <laughs> what are you talking about so it's just a way for you to start drawing is shapes and I probably said shapes 50 times in the past two minutes, but I mean it though. It's a good way to start. And those lines right there, what you see, those are the Christmas lights. Um, I finally started coloring. I made the worst decision. See, I thought I was going to keep the awful brown color. I thought I was going to keep the awful brown color. Wrong. Wrong. Um... So I do, you're going to see I do a lot of work here. You're going to see I do a lot of work. And I sped up the video even faster for this. Because this took forever. This did take forever. Um, and yeah. 
But I do, you're gonna see all this work and then be disappointed in me when you see what happens. Because I don't keep that background color, that brown. I don't keep that awful brown color. But yeah. Um, and then when it comes to when you start out, let's say you start out, right? And you're drawing the shapes and you're like, okay, I know how to do shapes now. Now what? Well, sometimes it's good to, uh, it, when you're starting to draw, it's good to learn early, right? So something that I learned early was perspective, which is learning how to make something look like it's far away or up close or learning how to position things so that it looks cl up close or very far. And um, usually, I can't show you here in this video because it's a speed paint video. But maybe in the future sometime, if you guys are interested in these, maybe I could make a video demonstrating some of these points for you. Like, okay, you, you bitched about in your speed art video, you, you mentioned shapes 500 times. How about you show us what you're talking about, right? Maybe some of you guys will be like, can you demonstrate this? I can. I can demonstrate this. But if you guys are interested, then I will do it. But otherwise, right now, I'm just doing speed paint videos and I'm just working on projects. But in the future though, if it ever comes up, if there is interest, I can show you what I'm talking about. I'm not just saying shit to say it. I'm just, I'm genuinely trying to express advice and what my experience was with drawing. Cause I'm not the best artist, I'm not. There's, there's so many people that are better than me. It's ridiculous, it's crazy. Like, I look on online, like, almost every day I see all this art, and I'm like, damn, this is way better than my shit. But I just try to still have, I try to have confidence in what I'm doing, and I'm just trying to make those small improvements, because at the end of the day, that's all you can do. And, and really, it's best not to be like everyone else. I, I like I said, I just try to take perspective from other people and try to implement it into my stuff, right? So, it's best that, you know, it doesn't look, um, what I'm trying to say is, it's best to just follow your flow and your groove, and if you can get advice and tips for how to do it better, um, take it, and take it with a grain of salt, so then that way, you're not trying to idolize people too much, um, that's something that you don't want to do because it'll crush you and you'll be like, okay, I'm trying to make it look like this, but I'm not happy. Why am I not happy with it? And that can be why, because you're trying to copy someone else and you're, and you're like, okay, this ain't looking how I, how I want it to look. And then you get all sad and disappointed. And that's happened to me. I'm, I'm talking from experience. That's why I'm saying this. And I've just, I've learned to eventually just follow my own groove, even if it looks unconventional. Like, really, these are Christmas lights, and up close, it kind of looks like shit. But when it, when it's far away, you don't notice. Because a lot of the times, you're, like, I'm, I'm hard on myself with my art. A lot of the times, you're your own, you are your own worst critic when it comes to this stuff. You're your own worst enemy. And sometimes you just gotta learn to go with the flow anyway. Ignore any doubts. And just try to get it done. And do what you can. And this is when... Right here. I'm gonna continue my point. But right here. The, the white dots are supposed to be snow. This is... I think right here is where I had the epiphany. There we go. There's the jump cut. Uh -huh. So what I did was... At the end of that stream, after it was over, I ended my stream around there. What I did was, I realized the horrible mistake I made, and I said, fuck this. And so now you're going to see the Christmas lights be drawn all over again. Isn't that fun? You're going to see that drawn all over again. Because I had to erase it all, and fix it, get all the black lines all neat and pretty again and implement the blue color in the background I like and I think works really good. But anyway, back to the main point. Um, you're your own worst enemy. 
because sometimes you notice mistakes. You notice how things look because you make it. And then other people will look at it and they won't even bring it up or notice it. They won't. I've had a, a lot of these doubts I'm speaking of come from high school when I was really getting into art a lot. When I was starting to get really into it. And I was starting to be more passionate with it. And so my um, my art teacher, his name, I don't know. Maybe, maybe some people who know me will stumble across this video. I don't know. But if you know me, you're going to know who this is. My, my art teacher was Mr. Carlson. He's a good guy. He can be really stubborn. Uh, he could be uh, difficult sometimes. But he had your best interests at heart, really, in the end, I think. Any teacher sometimes can be a bitch or an asshole to you sometimes. It's just human nature, you know. Sometimes people are bitches during the day or something. You know, something goes wrong or horrible, whatever. You know? But at the end of the day, they have your best interest at heart, you know, as long as they see you're trying and that you're trying to apply yourself to their lessons and their teachings. But yeah, he helped me a lot with my art journey, and I don't know if anyone comes across this if you're in school or anything like that. Like, I don't know if you're in middle school, high school, whatever. I don't know. But just try to take your teacher's lessons, right? Try to take what they're teaching you. But try to apply it to what you want to do. Don't follow them to the book, right? Don't follow them by the letter, right? Take their lessons. Learn what they're trying to teach you. But try to implement your own style in your own groove, right? Because, again, you don't want to directly copy someone. Because you're going to be disappointed if you do. You're going to be disappointed. And, uh... And honestly... It just comes down to practice and learning and just trying to better improve your game over time. And we got, uh, we got some time left. Uh, I'm looking at the timeline. Like I said, I'm reacting to this uh, on the fly. I'm looking at my timeline. So yeah, um, when it comes down to it, just try to implement those things I said. And... And if you're in school learning art, like I said, I was in high school learning some of these lessons. You're you're going to learn what shading is, what perspective is. At least if your art teacher is good and competent and they actually give a shit, okay? If they actually care. Because if you're listening to this and you're like, oh, I'm in school and I'm learning from art. I'm learning from an art teacher. And we're not learning any of this stuff. What are you talking about? You're a fucking liar. You know, you're probably saying that you're a fucking liar. Um, well, if that is the case, I apologize, because for real, that's shitty. Like, if you have an art teacher or something, and they're, and they're not teaching you any of these things, or, you know, they're being lazy with what they're teaching, I apologize, because that's pretty sad, to be honest. Because if I were an art teacher, I would do my best to teach everyone to the best of my ability. But let's say that's happening to you. Then I recommend just trying to look on YouTube, like for art tutorials, or guides, or something. I mean, hell, you could even visit the cesspit of Reddit if you want. But people can be hypercritical on Reddit, and sometimes they give horrible takes on Reddit. Reddit is known for that, and Twitter. Yeah, don't go on the Twitter. Let's just get that clear right now. If you're, uh... I never done this, because I knew, I always knew Twitter was a cesspit. I never did this, but something I'm going to recommend. Don't put your art, if you're new at art, don't put it on Twitter. People will probably tear you apart, call you shit, and they'll give you the criticism without giving you ideas of how to improve. They'll just be like, it's shit. The end. You know? Don't put yourself through that torture. Because it's fucking awful. Don't put yourself through that torture. It's just, it's a motivational killer. It's a waste of time. Don't do it. Like, save yourself some trouble. Because that's what I, from from people who are looking to get into art, that's what I see a lot, is they want to start, and then they lose the inspiration. Like, it's just not working out. It's not coming out how I want it to come out. Like, I'm getting demotivated. I'm done, you know? And for a while, I was, I, for a while, I quit drawing for a bit, too, because I was going through stuff, and I just needed a break. Sometimes you need a break, 
and that's fine. You could take a break, but just know that with taking a break, you might lose a little bit of that touch, right? You might lose a little bit of that skill, and you might have to get it back. So, like for example, in this stream here, that was kind of my thing. That was kind of my thing. I was losing a bit of my touch, and I needed to get it back. Because for a while, I took a break from drawing. And there's the Christmas lights, see? With me, looking at this from far away, it looks more like Christmas lights, to me. And I liked how it looked. And yes, there might be... This is, this is personal criticism. The lights might look like there's too many on the string. But to me, that was kind of the point. I kind of wanted it to be chaotic. I kind of wanted it to look like this. And I was happy with it. And sometimes, when it comes to aspects of your drawing, or your project, you're like, yeah, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but if it makes you happy, I mean, do it, if you want. Like, really, at the end of the day, it doesn't harm anybody. And at worst, you might get a little criticism being like, yeah, this looks good, but you could do this next time. And if you want to take that criticism and improve your game, you know, or your drawing, you, whatever. By game, I mean drawing, okay? If you want to improve it, you can be like, oh, okay, sure, we can do that. I'll do that next time. You know, it's a learning process. That's really all it is. Art is a huge learning process, especially for, be for beginners. And you never stop learning. With art, you never do. Even the pros, like you see on social media and shit, they're always learning. Whether they tell you or not, they're always learning too. They just won't tell you. And we're getting close to the end here. So, if you made it this far, I just want to say this. If you made it this far listening to my, um, my balls to the wall random um, rambling, because I'm doing this uh, without a script or anything like I told you, if you listen to this this far, I appreciate it, and I'm glad you stuck it through, and I hope that some of my advice here and my input is good. I hope it is. I'm just trying to give perspective from my point of view, and I hope it's not garbage. I hope it's understandable for you, and I hope that this video was also enjoyable and informative. That's kind of my goal. I wanted it to be enjoyable and informative. So, if you did, if you found it to be these things, just consider doing all the usual YouTube shit. You know, leaving a like for me, comment, and sharing it with other people that you might find might find this enjoyable as well. Just try to share it a little bit. Um, like I said in the intro, I have that personal goal of trying to at least hit 400 to 450 by the end of the year. I'm not expecting to get there, but I'm trying. And much like my art here, if you don't try, you never know if you're going to succeed. And like with this piece here, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I really like this one. So now, in here, I'm just adding the final touches. I'm putting the snow in there, in the background. And, yeah, that's basically it right there. Right there, that's it. There's the profile pic. Of um, my holiday profile pic. So, yeah. Um, that's going to be the end of this video. There's only a few seconds left. Um, I already said what I wanted to say, and uh, I just hope that you, whoever's watching this, you have a good day. And I hope to see you next time in the next one. So yeah, peace.